So about a year ago, I made this list originally, but I wasn't really happy with it because I was running out of ideas. I was like, oh man, what's a good game over? Because I do think game overs are very interesting and they play a huge role into what helps the game. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's a nice feature. So it became less of a subjective list and more of, hey, here's the most iconic shit, which I'm not about that. I don't care. There's no point in making a top 10 if you're just going to copy other people's lists. So I decided to say, screw it, let's try again, and I could think of better things this time. So now this is my list, my subjective choices. No Metal Gear Solid, no Game Over, yeah. I don't fucking care. Those didn't really have an impact on me. What had an impact on me, and what I feel are good Game Overs, are these. So the first one, of course, <laughs> we might as well make it interesting because, I don't know, it's it's one you're going to be seeing a lot, and it's one that makes an impression because you see it a lot. It's short, sweet, to the point, but I want to be the guy just because, again, you're going to be hearing a lot, you're going to be seeing a lot, you better get used to that Guilty Gear theme. I'm pretty sure it's Guilty Gear. So yeah, there's not really too much to say. I don't know, it's just, I feel like it worked. It there's nothing really special about it, it's just, oh no, I died, better get used to seeing that all the fucking time. It's like its own montage, and at least it's catchy sounding. Now this one's cheating because it's not technically a fact, it's only a theory, but it's still kind of a really well supported theory, and that's going to be the game over from the beta of Luigi's Mansion, which is the one where you see Luigi having stand up with his horrified face, no mansion behind him. This is also a theory of like an ending or a game over or something. Like, um, the idea is the timer ran out and then Mario's gone and that's Luigi's face. So you can nitpick if you want to, but I think the game over is probably the best uh, supported theory. It, I feel like it's really impactful and it's a shame they didn't get to use it, but yeah, there you go. I think that one is very good at leaving an impression. This one drives the point home pretty deep, because not only did you just fail and ruin your own life, you failed and you ruined that guy's life. So while you're getting a game over in Phoenix Wright, the judge is nailing it in that you're a fuck-up, telling you that your person is guilty. So not only did you fuck your own life up, you fuck their life up. And because it's worth mentioning, because everyone's, like, retarded. If you want to make it even worse, uh, the bad ending, quote-unquote, from Justice for All, where, if you're not good, Maya is never seen again. That's not an ending, it's just a glorified game over. Of all the James Bonds, though, I do think that this one's, uh, at least unique in its own characteristic, which makes it more of a game over than a death. So... It's, it's one thing to die and get the whole, you know, classic blood splatter across your screen as you fall to your death. And then it's another to get a replay of yourself dying over and over as you watch your own mistake. You watch your own fuck up as the game almost feels like it's taunting you in a cinematic feature saying, Hey, here's where you went wrong. Now this one I'm going to go a little bit more specific, but it could also be applied to all of them, and that's the game overs in Resident Evil, where, you know, you're dying, you get the little blood spray on your screen, it says you are dead to emphasize the point that you're stupid and you don't realize that you're dead. But if you've ever played Code Veronica, it gives you a little retry option instead of just putting you back on the title screen. Do you know what happens if you hit no on that retry option? <laughs> that happens. Pretty graphic, huh? I mean, at least for Chris it is. Claire, it's not so bad, but I mean, that definitely leaves it leaves an impression on you as far as the game over goes. Now this one's technically following a thematic because a lot of Rare did it, but the original to do it, as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, was Banjo-Kazooie, where when you got a game over or you save and quit, you were treated to a nice little cutscene of what happened because you didn't succeed. This also comes back in Donkey Kong 64, where you can see K. Rule blast away the island, or in Conker's Bad Fur Day, where you get to see yourself live as a table leg for the rest of your days, varying on how you died. But since Banjo is the one that, as far as I'm aware, was the first, Banjo's the one that we're gonna give it to. I'm not cheating because I like Banjo. 1998 happened first. Here's one I didn't think about uh, back then when I made the original list, and I kind of feel stupid that I didn't, because 
This was one of our favorite game overs as a kid, and it's so hard to see because, bluntly, the game's pretty easy that it's kind of hard to fuck up. But if you don't place within the top three in Mario Kart 64, You get bombed. That, as a kid, was... I don't know how the hell we figured that out, but we figured that out. So it was always this ongoing joke and always this exciting thing that whenever me and my brother would win, we would look at the fourth place person and say, Oh, who's getting bombed? It was exciting to us. It was entertaining to us. I still like it. It's still my favorite thing. I kind of wish they did that in the other Mario Karts. Kind of made it like this ongoing gag or something because I think it's funny I really like it that's my favorite game over it's a game over that you don't even feel bad about getting because it's entertaining that's pretty much all there is to say to it at least I'm not gonna get mad at it now here's one that I think is really unique but a lot of people seem to agree with me so I mean I don't really feel bad it just means I'm not unique but I like it it's one of my favorites um, I remember it as a kid before we got Mortal Kombat 4 uh, going to my dad's work, he used to work at a place called the Galaxy Club. They had arcade machines, they had bars, they had everything. It was a, it was a pretty cool British uh, military get-together place. And one of the ones that me and my brother would always go back to was Mortal Kombat 4. And generally, when you left the machine idle, it would show this preview of your, of your character falling down the well. It was also fun because we would learn things as we played it. And then eventually when we did get to own it, it was pretty great. But it was also, it didn't feel so bad when you lost and you couldn't put any quarters because you got to watch Scorpion fall to his death or Sub-Zero or whoever the hell. So I like it. I think it's great. It's much better than Trilogy's ending, that's for fucking sure. At least probably out of everything that came out of Mortal Kombat 4, that's probably got to be the greatest. This one right here is the primary reason I made this list, because I know nobody in the world understands just how great this is, and how underappreciated this is. Look at anyone else's top game over, look at your stupid ninja guide and your stupid fucking solid snake or whatever. It doesn't top this! This is the best! This is the greatest! This was the coolest fucking thing me and my brother saw as a kid. Even my sisters thought it was hilarious. It was it was awkward, it was confusing, it was Japanese as fuck, no one understand it. I still don't understand it, but I fucking love it. The music's great, it's just entertaining to watch. There's nothing better. It's just that's probably like my favorite thing about the Gomon games, is just that they have the most obscene game overs ever. But between the two I would say that I like Great Adventure better because, well, you're more likely to see it, and the music's better, and it's just overall so entertaining. There's words can't describe how much I love this, it's so great. Now this one's probably a stretch as far as the game over goes. As far as I'm concerned, it's a game over, and that's gonna be when the moon crashes into the earth in Mizura's mask. Because that's more than just a death. That's watching the world literally crumble as you get to watch it from the distance and know how much you failed. It's not just the idea that you died, it's the idea that everybody died. That right there is the centerpiece of everything that goes on in this adventure, and watching it literally fall to you has got like more impact than probably anything else. So yeah, it you could argue death, but I feel like it's the closest thing to like a real game over that Zelda has, because it's obviously the most impactful out of all of them. So there you go, that was my choice. Those were my subjective choices as far as my favorite game overs go, instead of going with, hey, what's uh, iconic or whatever, because I just, I don't care. I don't think it's a good idea to do that. But I know that I've said, like, lives are a dead concept or whatever, but it, it does feel kind of weird to not have things like a game over. Like, you can still use game overs, it just depends on how you treat the overall game, I guess. If you make it super unforgiving, then probably aren't going to be liked. But if you can m find a way to keep game overs as a thing, or like, if you can make a really good one, people are probably going to forgive you. It's just, you know, no one likes to repeat doing shit over and over again, that's about it. But that's that, that's all. You can tell me your opinions, your, your thoughts, your favorites, whatever. I did it because I thought this was unique, and I wanted to do it, and 
I'm leaving now. Goodbye, Chase Farrar. I'm hungry. Bye. Shut up, Jane.